Drugs are bad, except caffeine. In fact, it's the world's most used drug. But should you use it for endurance sports? And is it in fact not bad? Today we're doing science, the science of caffeine. Caffeine is a stimulant. It can improve your perceived energy levels, your productivity, and your ability to focus, which are all good things. And it is completely legal, even under the strict water in competition guidelines. In fact, an estimated 80% of the world's population use some form of caffeine daily, just to make it through the day, because life is hard and caffeine makes it just that little bit easier. Historians can actually trace the first brewed tea back to 2737 BC. That's nearly 5,000 years ago. Arguably, life was significantly harder back then, and also caffeine kicks must have been significantly harder to find. Endurance sport is also hard, and caffeine also makes endurance sports that little bit easier. Or at least, it can, if you use it properly. So today we're diving into the science of how caffeine works and how you can use it to boost your performance. Warning, signs incoming. Caffeine, or 137-trimethylxanthine, is a plant alkaloid with a chemical structure C8, H10, N4, O2, which looks like this. In its pure form, it's a bitter white powder, but luckily it's almost tasteless in things like coffee. It gets in your system quickly, within 15 to 20 minutes, and exerts its full effect after 60 minutes. The average half-life is about five hours, which is the time it takes for half of it for, to be eliminated from your blood. But the range can actually be between one and a half and nine and a half hours for different people. That's our guest, sports scientist Andy Blow. And that last point of his is important, so we'll circle back to it. So what does caffeine do? Well, caffeine's main effect is in your brain, where it does something science-y. Andy! It functions by blocking the neurotransmitter adenosine in the brain. Now normally, adenosine binds with receptors in the brain, making you feel sleepy and tired, and this builds up throughout the day. But caffeine binds with those receptors and stops adenosine linking on, meaning that you just don't feel as tired. It's also been shown to have a wide range of health benefits, including those associated with mental health and disease prevention. Most people know about and struggle to get through the day without these positive effects of caffeine. But caffeine has a dark side. <laughs> Some side effects linked to excess caffeine intake include anxiety, restlessness, tremors, and irregular heartbeats. Caffeine can also increase the likelihood of headaches, migraines, and trouble sleeping. And then of course, there's the diuretic effect of caffeine because it increases sodium excretion and has an effect on the kidneys, which could lead to increased dehydration. So what about using caffeine in sport? Probably the reason you clicked on this video. Well, caffeine was actually banned in sport from 1984 until 2004, at least in competition anyway. For a substance to be banned in sport, it has to meet three criteria. It has the potential to enhance performance, it has to pose some risk to an athlete's health, and it has to violate the spirit of the sport. A doping offence was defined as having a urinary caffeine concentration above 12 micrograms per milliliter. That's the equivalent of taking something like 10 milligrams per kilo of body weight in a relatively short space of time. And that is about three times the amount you need to see performance impacts. Performance impacts can be gained from caffeine taking just three to six milligrams per kilo. And even at six milligrams per kilo, the upper limit to what we normally recommend, some people will feel effects like anxiety, jitteriness, or even heart palpitations if caffeine doesn't agree with them. The IOC and WADA removed the classification of caffeine as a controlled substance in 2004, although it is still monitored, but it is now completely legal in sport. Essentially, caffeine is self-limiting. Above a certain amount, it actually has negative performance effects, so setting an upper limit is somewhat pointless. And it doesn't really pose a health risk to athletes. Caffeine is toxic, above 10,000 milligrams, but uh, you would never be able to get that from coffee or Red Bull. You would need a concentrated form to present any kind of health risk. So you can use caffeine, and given it is safe, legal, and effective at the right doses, you could argue you'd be foolish not to use it in your endurance sport. But there are some things to consider if you are going to use it. Back to our expert. Your own physiology matters. 
Remember I said earlier that the, the caffeine half-life with some people can be as short as one hour and 30 minutes or it could be as long as nine hours. Well, if you're someone who processes caffeine fast, then you can definitely use more of it in an event. If it's gonna take nine hours to even half clear your system, you don't wanna to take too much and risk an excess building up by the end of the event. Caffeine can be a diuretic, which means it acts on the kidneys, causing them to excrete more water. So it can cause dehydration. It also affects your GI tract, increasing motility in the gut, which means that it can cause cramping, bloating, or even diarrhea in some people. Lastly, it can push your heart rate up, something called tachycardia, make you feel anxious and jittery, and even cause sleep problems if you're particularly sensitive to it. And finally, there's your tolerance. By using caffeine frequently, you can build up a level of resistance to its effects, which means that all of the risks still apply without some of the benefits. So now we've pointed all those out, you're still gonna use caffeine, aren't you? So here's how. First, know yourself. If you use caffeine daily, you don't have any bad side effects and you used it in races before, you can probably head straight to five to six milligrams per kilo to get the maximum effects. If you've not quite had the same experience and you're a little bit more unsure, start smaller. Start with three milligrams per kilo and work it up from there. Then it mostly depends on your race length. For a race under two hours long, Take enough caffeine for an effect, that's three to six milligrams per kg of body weight, in the 60 minutes before the race starts. Remember to take into account previous consumption, like your morning coffee an hour ago, and plan to hit peak effect around race start. It takes 15 to 20 minutes to have an effect, and about 60 minutes to reach maximum effect. Don't take any more during the event, it won't help, and you'll only get that effect after the race. This plan is still true up to races about three hours long, although, Races beyond two hours, many athletes swear that they need a top up of their caffeine, although this is probably all in your head. For events three to six hours in length, again, front load your caffeine intake. Take most of what you need or can tolerate before the event, and then top up with 50 to 100 milligrams after three, four, and five hours. For events over six hours, as we have said, the effects of caffeine will slowly wear off. So you need to be a bit more tactical. Certainly still use caffeine and even use it early in your race, but maybe save the big boost hitting your maximum caffeine intake later on, closer to the run when you really need it. For really long events, over 12 hours, this is where preloading is actually missing a trick. Because these events are lower intensity, you're better off saving your caffeine for when you really need it. Keep the intake to a minimum early on and then build it up later in the event when you start to struggle. We hope this video has helped you get the most out of caffeine and the boost it can provide without falling into any of the pitfalls that it presents. Thank you to Andy Blow from Precision Fuel and Hydration for his help making this video. If you are looking for some more information on this topic, there's a link down below this video to the Precision Fuel and Hydration website where you can book a free consultation with one of their experts to help you with this topic and the rest of your race nutrition. Thanks for watching, goodbye.